Yeah, but I mean, how? I mean, I'm sure that I'm sure the Democratic Party is just like calculating how they big, have to. Be. How big is this, and what's what's the thing? Like I that? think they have no cards, and they're looking at this this game. And I don't know. I think they're depending upon party loyalty, and they're depending upon Trump getting convicted yeah. and arrested. I mean, and and um, uh, imprisoned rather. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't think it is. It doesn't seem to. It just seems like it's a bunch of trumped up charges. No pun intended. Yeah, I mean, I just uh, again, I, I I'm not a political commentator. I'm not an expert. It does seem like really like why are they going after him so hard right now when they could have done it? You know, like the the, the whatever the hotel thing or the valuation of the property from. 20 years ago it's bananas right. the valuation yeah. of the property is so obvious so off what it should be 18 million dollars for mar-a-lago i'd, f <laughs> I'd f buy it immediately if that shit was 18 million dollars and you were the only one that was a able to buy it you'd be a fool not to scoop it up because you could sell it right away you could get a loan and you could sell that bitch right away for who knows how much i mean i think forbes valued it I think it was like well over 700 million wow. and Trump thinks it's worth over a billion and he might be right That's what's crazy. It's a giant piece of property in one of the most valuable pieces of land in all of America I mean a house next to him down the street a much smaller place sold for 50 Yeah, so it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make it's it's yeah. it does yeah. make sense if you if you want to look at banana public Republic banana tactics. Republic, yeah. Yeah, I mean funny. when you're imprisoning and, and trying to convict your political opponents which is, I, the problem with that is, even if you think Donald Trump is a crook, even if you think that he should be arrested, this sets a precedent for future presidents. If we get someone who is not just Donald Trump, who has a lot of people in the center that say, hey, his economic policies were effective, his foreign policies were effective, even if I think he's a jerk, maybe that would be better to have a jerk run the country in a way that's better overall than what's being done right now. Even if you looked at that. What if someone further right than him steps in? What if a war breaks out? What if things get even crazier? What if nationalism really upticks? Then you have someone who is now in power that is far right, like has happened all over the world. If that happens and that person, if that precedent has been set for prosecuting your political opponents and yeah. going after them with trumped up charges, we have a horrible situation. And that's one of the reasons why we have to stick with the rule of law. We have to stick with the, the, the way this country was founded on. These principles were set up because they wanted to mitigate corruption at its base level at every step of the way. They wanted to stretch it out so no one could be an authoritarian dictator and run America. You know, I think people are finally starting to come to that realization. I think for a while, a lot of people were open-minded. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you don't know what's going on and you haven't really studied the extensive details. I think for the most part, people were open-minded to the idea that maybe Donald Trump did do something wrong. Maybe these indictments are legitimate, but see where they go. But over time, it's becoming plainly obvious to most people that it's all one big joke. It's all one big scam. It's banana republic tactics with a clear ambition of protecting Joe Biden and stopping Donald Trump from winning in 2024. It's obvious. And you know, the most obvious example is Letitia James and whatever's going on in New York City. This... John Jr. was on the stand as a state's witness just about two weeks ago, and he distanced himself from being, you know, one of the top heads of Trump organization and preparing those financials. That's not normal behavior. This... And what would you say to people who say, oh, I'm not going to bother to register to uh, vote because my voice doesn't make a difference or I'm just one person? I say one, I say one name, Donald Trump. <laughs> that should motivate you. Get off your <laughs> vote. Will you, will you sue him for us? Oh, we're going to definitely sue him. We're going to be a real pain in the ass. He's going to know my name personally. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's not normal behavior. People are realizing this. They're realizing that the Manhattan case against the Trump Organization, the civil fraud case, is all one big scam. They're alleging Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million. Okay, you know, your average person is seeing that and going, what is this? You know, I think the reaction tends to be something like, they try to convince me that Donald Trump is this criminal who should be sent to prison for the rest of his life. What's he guilty of? Well, see, uh, we believe that Mar-a-Lago is worth like $2 and he has a definite set meant. What? What does that even mean? Like, what am I watching? What am I being exposed to? Property values? What does that have to do with Donald Trump? Property values are assessed by third parties. If those assessors didn't do their job properly, what does that 
mean? Like, what, what is the point of this? Donald Trump is Al Capone because he believes that Mar-a-Lago is worth more than $18 million? These people are on drugs. The next case, not any better. The case after that, not any better. The fake elector scheme, Georgia case is falling apart. The January 6th case is the only one that they're probably going to be able to ram through and rush through ahead of the election. But it's another bogus case. We've been through the committees. We've been through the commission. We've had an, a nonstop end-to-end -end coverage on January 6th and Trump insurrection for two and a half years at this point. Enough is enough. People have had enough. Where is the message? There is no Democrat message. If Democrats had a moderate plan that emphasized on free market capitalism, maybe slightly bigger than conservative government, but, you know, relatively limited government, common sense plans that help the most vulnerable in society, if that was the case, you know, Democrats would probably be able to do pretty well if they ran on things related to health care reforms and whatnot and actually brought forward legitimate reforms like that's ever going to happen. Anyways, we're talking about in a hypothetical utopian world where Democrats are attempting to get elected, if they focused on solid ideas or moderate ideas, you know, kind of finding a balance between right and left, they could get elected. They could win elections. No problem. But they don't do that. They continue to become more and more extreme and more and more extreme. And it seems as though they're letting go of democracy these days. They have less interest in democracy and more interest in subverting democracy. They have more interest in changing the laws behind the scenes so that it benefits them than they do in actually presenting a message to the people. They have more interest in locking up their political opponents than debating their political opponents or proving them wrong. They have more interest in gaslighting, lying, and spreading propaganda about their opponents' ideas rather than winning a debate with facts and logic. It's just appealing to the cult, and that's another point that Joe Rogan mentioned that I thought was quite apt. They're depending upon party loyalty and Trump getting convicted and in prison. abso freaking lutely And you know what? Even beyond that, they're depending on party loyalty to convict Donald Trump, which is why they've launched all of these cases in Democrat stronghold counties. They did it on purpose. Fulton County, Georgia. You think Donald Trump's going to get a fair shot there? Oh, it's just a 90 to 10 Democrat county. No big deal. Another corrupt Democrat city. If it's not there, it's in Manhattan. If it's not in Manhattan, it's in arguably the most partisan left-wing place in America, Washington, D.C., which, you know, just happens to be the place that they're attempting to legally railroad Donald Trump, denying him discovery, denying him the ability to properly go through all the millions of documents for the case. They're not giving him extra time. They're trying to rush the case ahead of the 2024 election. Of course, the one case in the one place where people vote 95 plus percent for Democrats and in the one place where the case happens to be mostly opinion, you know, not really fact-based, did President Donald Glorf engage in insurrection peoples as the evidence provided enough proof? And every single freaking sheep Democrat on that jury is most likely just going to say yes. Why? Because, of course, as we know, the evil orange man, he's got to go at any and all cost, even though he's on the record telling people to be peaceful, stay home, don't enter the Capitol, peaceably assemble and have your voice heard peacefully and patriotically. These are paraphrases and direct quotes of what Donald Trump said on the day of. But, of course, ignore that. It doesn't matter when you're being tried in the Democrat court of public opinion. In other words, banana republic nonsense. But if Joe Rogan and his non-political guests can see right through it, then I pretty much guarantee you millions of Americans, and I mean millions of Americans, are probably coming to the exact same conclusion. And that's a little bit of a dangerous element that I don't think Democrats really want to play with. But that's just my thought. That's just my opinion.